Welcome to all and good morning. Um, I am here today to tell you about our B407 program, which is our postgraduate certificate in financial planning. Um, a little bit about myself. I, as uh, Tanya mentioned, I am a full-time faculty and coordinator of the financial planning programs here at George Brown College. Um, in my early days, I started out as an accountant, and as time went on, I really decided that I wanted to help people meet their financial and life goals. And as such, I have now um, pursued my CFP credential and became a great advocate for financial planning, um, literacy, um, and uh, of course, to help people you know, optimize their financial position in order to meet their life goals. And this program is very much aligned with um, that whole idea, okay? So right here on the right-hand side of your screen, you will see that um, the postgraduate program is, um, you know, it, it is sort of one of our, I, I'm going to say I'm most proud of that program. It, it absolutely um, is a career changer. Um, in order to um, enter this program, you have to have a degree or a um, advanced diploma completed already, but in no way, shape or form, does it need to be a um, degree in finance or accounting or even business at all. In fact, some of my top graduates have come from a history background, an English background, um, and have gone on to do great things in the profession of financial planning. So again, um, let me just pick up my handy dandy marker here. The program we are speaking about today is our B407 program. And as I just mentioned, it is at a degree level. Um, and it, it, you need a degree or an advanced diploma to enter. The most um, unique thing about this program, as with most postgraduate certificates, is it's eight months in duration. And it's an intense eight months, I'm not going to lie. But you will go from learning, uh, from basically having no financial background or knowledge to being ready to enter the financial services industry um, whether your interest is investments or retirement planning, or um, perhaps even just for your own personal interest. I always um, joke around with my daughters and say, if I had a program that I'd want you to take, just so that you are up to date on Canadian tax law and, and that you have a high level of financial literacy, this would absolutely be the one. For those of you who are... Um, you know, looking for uh, very specific credentials. Once you leave George Brown College, um, in our B407 program, you get a whole host of um, these opportunities that would be well aligned with our program. And what does that mean? Is that means we teach you the curriculum um, in order to pursue these credentials. But for all of these um, credentials, the Canadian Securities course, the LLQP, um, the QAFP and the CFP, you must um, pursue those with external certification bodies. So the Canadian Securities course, um, number one and two, is very well popular. And if you, um, it's very popular and very, um, it's a licensing course if you were to um, want to um, work in investments or mutual funds. Absolutely, you would need this. But to be quite honest, it is almost the entry program that you need um, to uh, get employment in almost any financial institution. If you were interested in the life insurance um, aspect of the world, um, you could get licensed to sell life insurance. And if you're interested in financial planning, um, FP Canada has two financial planning credentials, and by completing B407, you'd be eligible to pursue either of them. The QAFP being the entry level and the CFP, which is probably much better known, um, it's in fact recognized worldwide, uh, you will be eligible. You've finished your, both your core and advanced curriculum to pursue those credentials. So eight months of intense um, work and you are ready. 
The biggest question I get, and of course, I know that you were probably doing your research and looking at other postgraduate certificates, um, you know, around the, uh, you know, perhaps the GTA is they say, Carolyn, why don't you have a co-op opportunity in your B407? And I'm going to be very um, honest with you. When we were developing the, this program, we considered having a co-op because I know that at the end of the day, as students, you want to get a job. That's you know the main purpose of your education in many situations. However, we would be doing you, I'm going to say a disservice by offering a co-op because that means unless you got a, a certified co-op position, you could not graduate. And I am going to tell you from experience being in this program for well over 10 years is that when you graduate or finish your B407 education, you are employment ready, full-time employment ready. So employers are not interested in giving you a three-month um, uh, you know, co-op position where they are going to have to teach you the ropes. In fact, instead, they would rather be investing in you for long-term employment. And I'd suggest to you that um, a well good majority of our um, graduates, uh, I'm saying about 80%, will have a job in financial services within six months of graduation. You know, that's being um, making sure that there is no other issues um, as to why they cannot work, et cetera. So I've told you the admission requirements. Um, if you are an international student, welcome. And of course, we would be pleased for you to join us at George Brown College. Um, when you apply, there will be a proof of English proficiency. And again, for an international student, you want to make sure that your bachelor's degree is recognized in Canada. You do not take any electives. There are no you know, bird courses. Um, every course that you take in this postgraduate certificate is discipline specific. Um, so every single one of them is required for your competency as a financial planning professional. And we have intakes. Um, as of right now, our intakes are, Janu are September and January annually. Here's a little um, flavor for what you might be studying. And you know, for example, you this might look a little bit um, like a lot of information that you don't understand, but um, math for finance and investment, this is a great course. And for any of you who might say, well, you know, my degree was in history. I'm not really a financial person. We teach you all the ropes right there in that course. And I would suggest to you that we are the only post-grad certificate that can um, dedicates one full class to teaching you the mathematical side of what you need in the financial planning world. And this course is connected to all your other courses because you build the tools in that math course that's going to help you with personal financial planning and retirement projections. Um, my personal favorite is income tax. I um, actually teach the income tax courses. And, um, you know, of course, I, I tell my students, I'm going to save them or somebody they know $20 every class. And um, although income tax seems daunting, it's very gratifying when you know that you can add value to your students or your clients world because you know how the tax rules work. By the end of it all, yeah, the whole program culminates in this course, um, which is also my very favorite, um, FIN 4012 Advanced Financial Planning. And my students are wrapping up that semester right now and they've done two comprehensive financial plans um, for a, fi uh, a client situation. And they would consider all aspects of a client's situation. I mentioned to you that um, the B407 program, it actually, as far as the CFP and QAFP credentials, gives you the core education and the advanced education that FP Canada has set up requirements for. 
So um, all the, if you are ever interested in those two credentials with FP Canada, um, you would be eligible for both um, upon graduating from the B407 program. So the core education and the advanced education um, for CFP certification is completed. Of course, there are other steps and you have to write the professional exams with FP Canada, but you are well on your way as a graduate of B407. Um, again, uh, we are very well integrated with all of the external exams. We cannot offer them for you at George Brown College. However, um, you, we prepare you for them. So it's not like you're doing self-study for them. If you take our Canadian Securities Course 1 and 2, or Canadian Investments, it's called, you will be well prepared for the Canadian Securities Course. I think students like that because you also get to write exams in our classes in order to pass the classes. And that gives you practice as you start to head towards these professional exams. At George Brown, we are very well um, also integrated with FP Canada and we built our own curriculum. So the one thing you might notice, again, if you're shopping around with different programs is that they offer you curriculum of an external provider, whether it be Canadian Securities um, Institute or CIFP. At George Brown College, we build our own curriculum, we build our own courses, and um, that ensures that we can be nimble when um, you know rules change. Um, and we don't have to rely on a third party to make sure their textbook is up to date. Um, and we have aligned our curriculum, and I'm proud to say we were one of the first educators that has aligned their edu um, education with the new pathways that FP Canada brought out. Um, our graduation rate is high. What does that mean? That means that 85, oh, over 85, I think it's more like 89 or 90 percent of the students who enter our program actually graduate. And that's a big number. It's not an easy program. It's not because it's easy. It's because you are well supported. And I'm going to, if I can toot our horn, say that you are very well taught. The employment rate, as I mentioned, it varies a little bit year to year. Um, and that's over 75%. That number might not seem that high to you, but it's very high, especially when there are instances that our student base is an international student base and they go on to take other programs as opposed to looking for employment right away. Our opportunities and our strengths is that we have a strong faculty base that um, hold the credentials. In fact, I'm pretty sure that we have the most CFP professionals teaching in our programs than any other post-secondary institution. Our graduates are great advocates and ambassadors of our program, and they have gone on to do great, great things and um, has built a strong reputation for this program in the industry. And we also are quite engaged with certain employers who have been happy with who um, we've, um, they've hired in the past, and they come through to our career fairs year after year. Um, what are our challenges? Um, it, it is an intense program and sometimes for those who might be new to Canada, who are not, you know, sort of fundamentally familiar with some of our tax laws, um, it's a lot of new information. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it becomes a little bit of a burden for them. Um, but uh, it does uh, absolutely get them in the uh, right arena and um, absolutely uh, gets them to the place that they want to be as financial professionals in Canada. And so I wanted to ensure that there was time for Q&A. So I um, will wrap it up here. Um, I will say that the B407 program, it, it has some great satisfaction ratings within George Brown College. We exceed the George Brown College and um, we also, it, through the KPIs, I've been quite familiar with them in the past few years. 
we exceed or one of the um, our, our satisfaction rates absolutely exceed even that of the School of Accounting and Finance and many of our competitors. We've had some great success stories in the sense that our students have gone on to compete in um, you know, financial planning competitions every year. Um, two years ago, I guess 2019, we won both the regional and the um, national championship uh, this past year. I'm very proud to say that students from B407 did participate and we came in second at the national level, which is still pretty good. Um, although sometimes silver hurts as opposed to the gold medal, um, it's still something to be very proud of. So at this point, um, I will open it up for your questions. Great, thank you so much, Carolyn, that was awesome. So we do have a few questions in the Q&A um, section. So maybe I'll just read them out to you if that's helpful. So the first question we have here is somebody who is already looking to have finished this program and move on to an, a second program. And they are asking, would you recommend B406 marketing management financial services after this course? If not, then which course would you suggest I go for? Uh, thank you for that question, and it's a very common question that we get all the time. I will tell you that there are absolutely synergies between B407 and B406. I think B406 is actually, um, yeah, marketing, I call it marketing financial services. And of course, um, they could go absolutely hand in hand. And as I mentioned, when I talked about the graduation rates, uh, many of our international students absolutely go on and take another post-grad um, program. The one convenient thing about B406 and B407 is that they both share Canadian Investments course. So once you take it in your first program, you don't have to take it again in your second program. Um, so that saves you a little bit of time or effort. The other reason why this is very well um, these two programs are very well integrated is because in order to market something, you fundamentally have to understand the products or the lingo, if you will. And when I used to work at, I used to work at FP Canada. And when I used to work at industry, you know, we would um, write up something for the marketing, for a marketing piece or for a speech or what have you. And the marketing individuals would take that and sort of, you know, gloss it over and make it more user-friendly language. Well, in doing so, they sometimes change the meaning of the program, of what I, the, what I was trying to say. Um, so absolutely being a marketer, um, you know, having that marketing side, that um, having that marketing side that, I'm sorry, um, having the marketing side that uh, would go hand in hand with the technical knowledge is absolutely a strong one. As far as what would be your other programs, um, you, the other program that might be suitable that is not quite out yet, but that is being built and it would depend on your timeline is we will have a more investment specific postgrad certificate that could be geared a little bit more towards CFA. All right, here's another question. Oh, Tanya, do you want to um, pick and choose which one as I go through? Because I see some might be no, you can just, I, I was okay. going to go through all of them. You might just want to read out the question because I don't think that everyone else can see the question. Absolutely. All right. I have another great question here. Is it possible to enter into the diploma program with a bachelor degree and not um, a school diploma? So for the B407, any bachelor degree that is recognized in Canada will be entered, will allow you entry. So it does not have to be from George Brown or even a Canadian school. So hopefully I've answered that question. Um, when you say the diploma certificate, I'm presuming you mean the B407 certificate. So entry into this eight month program, if you have a bachelor's degree, this is absolutely the most efficient uh, route for you to take um, in order to get all your financial planning um, curriculum in eight months. 
There are people in industry who take years and years and years to knock off all of the courses that you would be taking here in eight months. Uh, but again, your entry requirement is a bachelor degree or an advanced diploma. Um, Isha, can we get uh, oh, sorry? Can we get employed on a basis of this certification directly without any credentials, as you mentioned? Absolutely, you can. And in fact, to enter financial services. Um, some students get in with just completing the program and going, um, you know, searching in to, for work in a job or in a bank or what have you. I will tell you, though, much of your competition as you are applying for a role in financial services, sometimes a feather in your cap would be to have the Canadian Securities course um, as offered by CSC. But is it absolutely a requirement? No, it is not. Are there any inner exams for the applicants? Does, uh, does that mean entrance exams, potentially? Um, if you are looking, there are no entrance exams, except you might have to take an English literacy test. Are there any scholarships available for international students? Um, I would presume they are. Um, I don't have first knowledge of those. However, I do believe that um, they would be uh, well promoted through the International Center, which would be your point of contact um, when it, in your application process. Uh, would a CFA level one certificate along with this course boost my chance of getting employment in the financial services industry? CFA level one is absolutely a um, absolutely will help you get um, employment in the financial services industry. Depending on the area of the bank that you want to specialize in, if you are very much you know more um, geared towards uh, the corporate banking or investment banking, you know CFA is a requirement likely for entry and um, they'll probably want you to do more. Um, some other students do use the CFA level one as sort of a replacement for um, taking the CSC and absolutely it would be acknowledged as such. The one thing that this program brings to you is a um, broad knowledge of all areas of financial planning, which will allow you to really figure out where it is that you want to specialize, if that's something that you want to do, or you stay in the full comprehensive financial planning. I will tell you that uh, more and more CFA um, certified individuals are um, taking financial planning to supplement their knowledge because the industry today is starting to demand that even if you are a certified CFA in practice, that you have that knowledge about estate planning and income tax that's not so narrow, but more on a broad level. How is the fall 2021 program going to be offered, online or offline? I haven't um, got specifics on that, but I am quite sure that it will be offered online. Every indication that we have and um, is that it will be offered online. Um, and so we encourage people to apply and um, you know, certainly that will be confirmed in the very near future. Hello everyone, I have a lot of questions. Is this program going to be online or also in person? I um, mentioned that um, what we are also hoping to do in the future is, um, you know, we'll always have some components potentially online as we go forward. But as of right now, every in the formal word would be um, every indication would be. Um, and Tanya, you might have more information than me, um, but that you were pretty much counting on fall 2021 to be online. Yeah, um, that's the same information I have, Carolyn, is that uh, we, we haven't made any formal announcements yet, but that's kind of what it's looking like. Right. Can you get more than one certification and do you need to reapply to it? So you need the, um, absolutely, you can get all of those certifications that I mentioned um, in the meeting. And do you need to reapply to it? Um, 
for the securities course um, in practice, sometimes if you're licensed to sell securities, they do make you redo it. Um, and I can't remember the specific timeline. As far as the QAFP or the CFP, once you earn those credentials, you do not have to reapply, but you just have to continue um, to maintain your competency. So by taking continuing education courses, but you do not have to write the certification exams any more than once. For the income tax course, does this mean you could do your own taxes? Absolutely, you can do your own taxes. I don't teach you the software, um, but I teach you how you could do it manually if you wanted to. So absolutely, you would be know everything that there is to know about personal income tax. Does the college help us find jobs? Um, we provide a career fair and um, we have some employers who um, historically have come to campus with a roster of jobs that they are looking to fill. And sometimes we do targeted interview processes. But do we, um, of course, we have a great um, career center and, um, but we do not, physically help you find the jobs, but we give you lots of leads. In fact, our faculty are well connected. For example, right now, I've had some old, um, you know, graduates or people who have hired from us before come directly to us as faculty and say, please line us up with some students. And we work closely with our career center to help our students get just that, a career. How much will tuition be per semester? Uh, for a domestic student, as you would see on the website, it's uh, less than $5,000. It's probably in the $4,500 range for both semesters. Of course, um, with a um, international student, it would be different. Can you work part-time well in this program? In general, we don't encourage you to work more than um, 20 hours per week. As I said, this program is um, 18 hours in class per semester, roughly, um, plus hours outside of work. So it is a fairly heavy course load, um, but um, many of our students do work part-time. I have applied for financial planning and marketing management integrated course for the fall. What should I expect will be taught in it? Uh, well, I've sort of gone through a little bit of that for the financial planning. We teach you all the fundamentals of personal financial planning. Marketing management, um, of course, will take what you've learned um, and use it to more of a marketing angle. How do we appeal to our um, you know, uh, potential customers who are in the market for buying financial services? Maybe just put your slide back up with the courses, Caroline. That might be helpful just in case they came in a little bit later and missed that part. Okay, great. Um, let me do that with the courses right yeah. here. How's that? Can you see it? It's still sharing? Yes. Yeah, I can see it. Okay, great. On average, how many hours work does a student need to put in? Okay, I, so I've sort of mentioned that. I would say 18 hours a week in class. And then for every hour of class, I would suggest to you, there's probably another two hours, one to two hours. Of course, every week is a little bit different. You know, sometimes the course work is goes in ebbs and flows, but you're looking probably at 40 hours a week, um, you know, for sure. It, it is a, um, it's absolutely a, um, you know, a, a fairly intense program. I'm sorry, I want to, oh, is it possible to enroll in B133 with my bachelor degree? Absolutely, you can enroll in B133 for your bachelor degree. Um, you will get many, you won't get quite as many of these courses. Um, in the B133, you in the first year, you're going to take more general courses and then um, you will get tax, you will get retirement planning, uh, personal financial planning, uh, and law. But some of these ones on the right-hand side of the screen, such as estate planning, the second income tax course, um, and advanced financial planning is not in the B133. 
I absolutely encourage you to come to my session at 10 o'clock where I'll bring you totally up to date on that program. I am an international student. If this is online, can I intend from my own hometown? Will this impact my Canadian work permit? Um, as far as those peculiarities, uh, right now I have many attending from their hometown and I believe during the time of COVID um, shutdown that the, you know, um, work permit requirements have been amended. However, I am not exactly sure how that will be going forward. The, um, you know, I encourage you to apply and then absolutely when it gets closer, um, you know, and we know exactly how the program is rolling out. I believe that there will be clarification on the impact for your work permit. And I think uh, the International Centre has uh, on this plat, this Acadia platform for our open house today, uh, I believe they have a kind of a Q&A room over there. So after the session, if you wanted to pop over there, they may have more information than we have. But um, I think our understanding, I have the same understanding as Carolyn, is that the Canadian government has made some allowances during the time of COVID um, to allow you to at least start your program uh, for a certain amount of time uh, from your home, um, your home town or your home country. Uh, and then kind of continue along that path. But they would definitely be able to advise you um, better than we. Um, and so, yeah, good to check in there. Okay, next question. Um, if it is going to be online learning, this is a great one. Can it be done on your own pace or will you have to attend an online class? Okay, so right now as it stands, our program and one of the biggest benefits of our program is that you get a live professor. This is not you just reading a textbook or reading some notes that are posted. And you, we want to, you should be as a student, very careful when I, in fact, I like to call it not alter, um, online learning. I like to call it alternate delivery. Because in my world, as a professor, there is really nothing different that I do. I deliver it, I teach it, I explain it. Um, so the pace is just like you coming to class. Does that mean if you're sitting on the other side of the world that you have to be there every single lecture, you know, which might fall at a not opportune time for you? Um, not exactly. Most faculty will record their lectures. Um, of course, you do give up some of that benefit of being live and asking live questions at the time it's being presented. Um, but many of my students will take advantage of the recordings um, and uh, not be there necessarily day after day after day. However, for tests and um, you won't be going at your own pace, I guess, the test will be the test day in your class time. The assignments will be due in your class time. So it is very much like a class um, that I would be delivering to you in person. It's just um, not face to face. How much time does it take for the confirmation of uh, offer letter internationally? I'm going to... Um, say that I'm, I'm struggling with that one, you will have to talk to the International Center. I, I know that different um, offers will uh, take different amounts of time. So, and um, I know that it's quite a bit earlier than a lot of the other offers. And sometimes the programs will uh, close to international students at different times. So it is best to speak to the International Center about that. Well, we have classes every day, i.e. how does the school schedule usually look like? What time uh, type of work should we be expected to do? Um, exams, tests, assignments, and group work. All right, I will start with the first question. Um, because you're in B407, you are what I would call a cohort. So when you, um, so for example, if you look at your screen, you're gonna see the first um, six or seven courses Everyone who enters B407 in semester one will, with you will have the exact same courses at the exact same time. 
So you don't have the flexibility to take math either on Tuesday morning or Thursday afternoon. No, your math class is offered when you are in the math class. You are in the same class with the pe same people um, day after day. So to your point, the school schedule for sure, um, I have never seen B407 spanned across five days. So you will never have classes every day. The most common occurrence that I would see is that it is four days a week and you will have one day off. Having said that, I have seen very rare occasions where um, when you have six courses, this career planning course is actually just um, a shorter course and it's one hour a week um, for, I'm not even sure if it goes the whole semester. Um, so these six courses here, um, I have seen on some occurrence or you might have you know, two courses on Tuesday, two courses on Thursday, and two courses on Friday, and you would have Monday and Wednesday off. So um, for sure, I, I can't remember the last time at either B407 intake has had five days a week. It's usually four days a week, but on a very rare occasion, you could get a very concise schedule, which is three days a week. And it um, as far as the type of schoolwork, Exams, tests, and assignments, we do them all, okay? Exams, tests, assignments, group work, depending on the course. In my income tax course, I don't give you that much group work because it's sort, sort of like the blind leading the blind, if you will. You need to know the tax rules. Um, but in advanced financial planning, there's a lot more group work because that's when you're sharing ideas and strategies. Um, so I would say that across all of the courses, um, certain courses are more traditional as far as um, test ty and type lecture, um, and many other ones are group work and assignments. There are absolutely many careers in this field. Um, as far as fine, you can you can specialize in any component of financial planning in the financial services industry now. Um, you know, historically the industry used to be commission-based. Now there are many, many salary type roles. Um, so I would say, um, you know, there is a wide range of careers available in this field. And you know what, if you really want to understand what might be available to you, I would actually suggest that you take this, um, you know, the certifications that I spoke about here CSC, LLQP, QAFP, and CFP, and put those in a job search engine. So like Indeed or what have you, and see what types of jobs come up, because that's how you'll really know what's available for you if you should take one of these paths. Doesn't matter what school you do the certificate at. Absolutely, it does only if you want to be really successful in getting um, these credentials, okay? Um, as far as employers, they like to see that you've um, finished an educational program, but realistically, what is most um, prevalent with an employer is some of these external uh, credentials that they are very well familiar with. And our program is extremely well aligned with them. I have been accepted for financial planning September 2021 intake. Currently, the course is online. So do I need to attend from Canada? So if you're in Canada and it's being offered online, that's probably because um, the college will actually not have a seat um, for you. So um, because maybe the college isn't open, so you will not need to attend from Canada. How many, this is a great question. How many students are there in one batch of B407? Are there opportunities for peer learning, especially on the online platform? Um, one B407 intake, I believe is capped at 55. I'm going to say in general, it's about 40 students. So we often get um, full offers, um, maybe about 45, but sometimes when push comes to shove and then they start the program, they don't, some of the people who were accepted and did accept don't actually start. So um, in the last few years, um, it might have even been capped at 50, 
which is great because you don't want too, too many people. As far as peer learning, we do everything. We put you in groups, um, you know, through different software um, and we, you know, get um, peer groups and many groups um, in this program, especially B407, it becomes a community. All right, because you are in the same class with the same 50 students for 11 co courses. You get to know everyone quite well. I can assure you that. All right, I'm a little concerned about our time as I have another session to go to, but a um, few more questions here. How long is it taking for visa applications to go through in the current scenario? Again, I don't know the answer to that. You will have to talk to the International Center. Tanya, do you have any idea on that? I don't either. So yeah, pop yeah. over to the International Center. Um, what kind of jobs are actually offered after doing this course? That's a great question. And you know, I always set that expectation for students. The job that you will get immediately after completing this course is probably not going to be your dream job. You have to get into financial services if that's where you want to go. And you will probably um, be, you know, starting at a, a low to mid-low um, position. They're not going to put you in as a comprehensive financial planner right off the get-go. However, what I can tell you, because of the certifications and the knowledge that is embedded in this program, um, my, our students move within a year, for sure, into a role that is uh, much more in tune with their experience. Now, I many some students do jump into what is their dream job. I had somebody go right into TD financial planning. Um, uh, it was somebody who was a little bit older and had some experience in her home country. So that was part of the reason. So keep in mind, as much as this education gives you the solid foundation, you do need to enter but once you enter, you will um, do quite well, um, or at least that is the experience of many of our students. Is the CFP credential the same in India as Canada? It will be recognized, um, but it, it's not quite the same. All right. So I'm on. I've been on some international committees. I've been, I've participated with um, uh, the owner of the Marks internationally, and was um, you know apprised when India became a certificate, a certifying provider of the CFP. It is not quite the same. Certain knowledge will transfer over, such as investments. However, in Canada. You know, our tax laws are, and our legal system is significantly different, which would make it very different. How can I connect with people in my course that is financial planning? Again, as I said, we, we do take every step to connect and you will get to know your class very well. Any courses or learnings that you can suggest that we complete before the course to get our basics clear? Not really. I, I, I honestly am so um, confident that if you come into this program and you stay committed and um, diligent, that we teach you right from A to Z. So you don't need to have any um, thing ready except for your energy and commitment to this program. Do we need to purchase specific programs or do we need a specific type of computer or laptop? Um, there are no specific programs um, as far as computer programs, and you do not need a specific computer or laptop. However, please be advised that it is becoming more and more prevalent in the alternate delivery environment that you will need a, a laptop with a camera um, and, of course, a speaker. Um, so you can speak and you can see me and I can see you all of those kinds of things. But as far as specifics, there is none. 